Welcome to the C-Suite Spot interview series where we explore how to reach, lead and deliver a C-Suite role today. I'm delighted to be joined here today by Danny Harmer, Chief People Officer of Aviva. Danny, thank you for joining us today. Well, thank you so much for having me. So can I start by asking, what did you want to be when you were a child? Oh, OK. Well, obviously a princess for a, for a little while um, and probably um, a, a ballet dancer as well. I did ballet actually until I was 17. Um, wow. which you know, you, you're seeing me from the neck up. I probably was never really built for it, but I did love it. Uh, but the 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 thing I most wanted to be was a maths teacher. Really, really wanted to be a maths teacher when I was younger. Um, I suspect because I had a maths teacher who I thought was great and I quite enjoyed the subject. I, ca I can see no other reason for my passion <laughs> at the time as a child to go, God, I'd just love to be a maths teacher. Um, that that uh, that that faded with time, but yeah, maths teacher was was uh, so, princess ballerina, maths teacher, all fairly so in the same family. <laughs> so, so when did you decide that HR was your thing? It was uh, much much more recently, actually. Um, so I was working at um, Halifax, Halifax Bank of Scotland. Yeah. And at the time I was an area manager, so working in the retail network, looking after um, areas of, of branches and um, uh, somebody you know, said to me, you know, what, what do you think you want to do with your career? Actually, it was a, a new regional um, director who'd come in and I said, do you know, I think I'd be I'd be OK at this HR thing um, because the way I run my area is all about how how is it that people impact on the performance of the area the, the you know the customer experience how we plan our resourcing how we allocate targets in relation to people's skills and capabilities and also to you know to the market area but for example at the beginning of every quarter we'd sit down and do our targeting and go right Hounslow is really good at personal lending Richmond is really good at investment so we should put our best investment advisor in Richmond and our best personal loan advisor in in Hounslow and we should you know allocate the targets accordingly um, and who's our next assistant manager going to be and who's our next branch manager going to be um, and how do we man the store so that on us on Saturdays you know we're providing excellent service to customers and really you know all the sort of interventions that sit as part of HR were the things that I think made my areas successful um, and you know we had a new regional director come in he said what do you want to do and I said I just think the way I run my area, if you scaled that, it would make the business the business more successful. And God love him. Um, uh, probably about six, nine months later, heavily pregnant with my second child, he came to see me at home and said, um, we're changing the footprint of some of the regions. The London region is too big. We're splitting it in two, which means we need another head of HR. How about it? Yes, please, said I. I did point out with my large stomach uh, full of full of baby. I went, I'm about to have a child. And, I, you know, this is the, the sort of stuff that, you know, more nearly 19 years ago was was quite unusual. He said, don't worry, we'll cover it. Great. Literally still love him, still adore Great. him. A great reminder from all of us to give people opportunities. Yeah. And, it, it, and if you had to summarise your whole career in one minute, what would you say? <laughs> That's the, the worst question. I mean, it's a brilliant question. It's the worst question ever to answer. Um, that's what I've done in the past 30 probably years. Um, and I think I've been privileged to work with lots of people who've helped me see great leadership. I think I have had the opportunity to see not great leadership. Um, but what I've understood is that, you know, the secret of success for every business I've been in is through its people. Um, and, you know, the, the biggest impact on that is is leadership. And I think as HR, we have the privilege to support on the agenda, but we don't own it. We're kind of there as custodians of culture and performance and leadership and values and all that sort of stuff but um I you know I think I there are so many inputs into leadership for example I think becoming a parent made me a better leader I was probably quite some people might say I still am 
but I was probably very pointy elbowed and, and ambitious um, before I had children. And suddenly for me, becoming a parent, when you realize you can't control everything, it's not about you anymore. You go, oh, okay, well, this is an interesting change in my life. Um, so yeah, there you go, and, leadership. And how would you describe your current role briefly? My current role, I, obviously I am very privileged, absolutely love it. My current role, you know, the, the purpose of uh, what we do at Aviva and the people function is to help Aviva be better through its people. Mm -hmm. um, and I think, you know, the, the key thing there is, right, what is the organisational strategy? What is it that the business needs to achieve for its customers, shareholders, employees, you know, the various stakeholders? And how does the people function enable that? and then get ahead of it and actually be part of the agent for change to help the business um, be all that it can be. Um, you know, ultimately, of course, I'm going to say this because of the job I do, but genuinely, really what businesses have are their people. Same with you, right? You can replicate technology. Um, mm -hmm. you, you, can, you can have physical networks and products, and, but it's your people. Uh, that have the biggest impact on what your customers experience, um, the value that's created from the inputs um, that, that you, you choose as a business. Um, and so, uh, you know, it's just it's just such a brilliant job to do. And have there been key moments or decisions in your, in your career that you've made that you feel have been key to, to getting to where you are today? Yeah, I think so. I think going into HR, um, uh, for me, um, I think leaving Halifax Bank of Scotland was a really, uh, the, by then it was Lloyds Banking Group because um, Halifax Bank of Scotland age boss had been acquired by Lloyds Banking Group um, at that point um, during the financial crisis. Um, and I think choosing to leave was a really important step for me. I'd been there maybe 17 years and it had been a fantastic place to work because it's a big organization the career opportunities I've done operations roles um you know store leadership branch leadership roles um the you know sort of local director area manager regional director HR fantastic grounding but actually I was probably, I loved it there. I knew the people, I was comfortable there, but I only knew one way of doing things, which was the sort of, I mean, it was, it was more than one culture, but the sort of Halifax, Bank of Scotland, Lloyd's sort of smorgasbord mm -hmm. of, of what existed in the business. And when I left, it felt, it felt like a pretty terrifying thing to do, to just go and work for another organisation. I had I had um, worked somewhere else before. I worked for um, HBOS. But it was just transformational for me to go, OK, hang on a sec. I thought that what I did was good because of the place I was. Actually, I can separate my skills and qualities from what's great about the organisation and see what I have that's transferable. Um, and how I can apply that learning in a different environment. I think you get a clearer sense of you and the value you bring when you take what you have to another business. I'm not saying, you know, if people are incredibly happy in their organisations, you know, by all means stay. But I think it can bring a narrowness to your experience and the value you bring to an organisation if you don't move. And here's the thing, if it doesn't work out, if they're a decent business, they'll say to you, if it doesn't work out, come back, right? So give it a go, give it a whirl. Yeah. And, and, and what's great to me about your career is you, you started off in line management and you've moved to a, a, a start what they call a staff role. How, do you think that earlier line, line experience has been important to your to what to, to what you do today? I think it's important in two ways. I think firstly, I've been a customer of HR. So yeah, okay. I understand what I wanted, you know, when I was a customer of HR, please don't tell me about shiny new things that you're doing that you think are brilliant. Tell me how you're going to help me as a business leader, you know, with being better or growing or dealing with this issue I've got that I'm finding really tricky to resolve. Um, 
So I think, you know, being a customer of the service you provide is really important. You know, I say to my team all the time, be a customer of us, you know, go on and try applying for a job with us. Just just get, continuing to challenge yourself and look at what you do through a different lens. I think the second one is it it probably helps with your credibility. You sort of speak the broader language of business and leadership. And when you are supporting people and coaching them and challenging them, you know, being able to say, oh, yeah, you know, when I was when I was doing, you know, when I was a regional director, here's some of the things I tried. Um, that I think I think it helps give you a sort of um, a credibility and a, and a grounding that's really useful in the role. And and and, and on that journey, you know, on your career journey, have you had a guide or mentor or influencer that's had a p- p- particularly significant impact on you? Or? I, do you know, I'm asked this question, and every <laughs> time I go, no, I I think I'm a gatherer of gather of people that sounds quite sinister doesn't it of of I, I'm very lucky to have relationships with lots of people and um they all bring something you know and I hope I hope it's two way I hope I I support them as well um but I t- tend to have a few sort of mentoring coaching informal relationships with people which kind of dial up and down um and I, 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 I quite like the kind of, oh, you know, I really need to noodle this over with somebody who's going to challenge me on it. Well, I'll, I'll phone, you know, Vicky or, wow, this is an interesting question on inclusion. Mel is brilliant at this. I'm going to, I'm going to give her a call. Um, it's that, that's, that's pretty much how I've managed my mentoring, um, uh relationships over my career and it just it's just i think it's just how it works for me mm. and have you ever had a, a sort of career crisis moment was it was it would be it would be clean sailing all the way De- definitely not clean sailing all the way <laughs> um i i mean you know making the decision to leave uh lloyd's which was was absolutely the right thing to do but those decisions are hard if you love a business and the people in it they are hard so deciding to do that was tricky um i then moved to um uh barclays i was working for barclays um in their corporate functions doing hr and it was a time of enormous change for barclays um I, I mean, I in the sort of 18 months I was there, I think I had probably four bosses with mm. the, you know, the change going on in the organisation. Um, and I'm sure Barclays is a great organisation, fantastic brand. And actually, it, you know, it attracts really good talent. But I was I was ready to leave when I decided to leave Barclays and then went to Metro Bank, which I literally fell in love with. I mean, you know, still has a little piece of my heart is still Metro Bank Red um, because it's just a fantastic organisation. And and I didn't start it, but coming in early and building something um, that that is challenging you know, customers is a, a brilliant, brilliant experience, um, especially with, you know, not huge amounts of funds to do it. And it encourages you to be really creative. So, um, yeah, they've. they've there have definitely been a couple of instances where um, I sort of gone, oh, am I doing, am I doing the right thing? But um, that, you know, being prepared to bet on yourself and understanding that you do have skills and value that you add, and that's easier if you've, if you've moved um, and you're going to be fine. And, and so, so how do you develop those skills and knowledge? Or, or, how, or how have you done that through, through throughout your career? Do you, do you have a way you do that or, or something? I am. I So uh, the sort of kit bag of skills and experiences we have. Um, I was talking to um, someone in my team the other day about this. And um, I think the way I gather stuff is through stories. Um, that, you know, I, I, I will remember, oh, hang on a sec, that's, you know, this is how that applies. Here's an example of where it works. Um, and I remember things through, you know, stories and experiences. And I also share that learning through stories and experiences. And I, I, the 
the way I kind of apply my knowledge is I go, well, there's been a previous experience where I've tried this, you know, what happened? Um, what did I do? Because thankfully, 30 years of experience plus, plus, 30 plus years of experience, if you can keep it all and go, well, that didn't go well, I'm really not going to do that again. And that went well. Let's think about why it went well. Um, I think that's really important. One of the interesting things when I was running kind of business development sales teams that I always found fascinating was that when you speak to sales leaders, most of them can tell you when things aren't going well, most of them can tell you in great detail why they're not going well. Mm -hmm. And then when things are going well, they don't really know. They're just going, well, this is great. I'm just going to enjoy the ride. The really good leaders you know the sort of business development leaders you know and I had the experience to work with many of them in my team um what they found really you know what really impressed me about them was that they could tell me why things were going well and then they could replicate it and that's I think a really important point and and Earlier, you mentioned Dickie and Mel's as a sort of source of knowledge. It, 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 in terms of your, in terms of your your network, how, how important has that been to you? Really important. I mean, it's just the sort of sounding board. You know, somebody's got you. I, you know, I, I talk at Aviva sometimes about the fact that you know, in the leadership team at Aviva, we just need to remember that, you know, leadership jobs can be quite lonely. And actually, you need you need to have cheerleaders around you. Now, I don't just mean people who go, well, Danny, that's brilliant, regardless of, you know, anything you're talking about. I think that's absolutely genius. They need to be straightforward. But someone who's rooting for you, someone who's got you, someone who comes to you with positive intent, even when they're telling you something you don't want to hear. And actually, you know, the flip side of that is I think that is a really important part of, if you know, the CHRO, the CPO job. Um, that's a really important part of your role as part of the leadership team. And in terms of the partnering relationship you have with the CEO, I I'm just going to take these out because the battery is about to run out. But keep going. Okay. okay. And, and so, so, OK. And, and when you got into your first sort of executive committee team, if that makes sense, or your first C-suite team, the first sort of top team, what 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 do you think was, was about you that, that that got you that step in, if that makes sense? It, it depends. It depends where you decide. So my as far as I'm concerned, my first executive committee, as in on the leadership team of a an independent organization or a listed company, was um Metro Bank. Mm -hmm. um, and we weren't listed when I first joined, but we listed during my time with them. Um, uh, I mean, the, the CEO there, Craig Donaldson, knew of me from HBOS and um, some of his team had worked with me at HBOS. Our, you know, our paths had kind of vaguely crossed. Um, I think it was my probably the breadth of experience, the fact that I knew retail banking really well, um, mm -hmm. that I had a you know, passion for the customer and a passion for how the colleague experience feeds through to the customer experience um, and enough breadth of experience to be able to build stuff and find pragmatic solutions. And again, you know, um, he took a he took a he took a chance on me, um, which was which was brilliant. And, you know, d during my time there. I think what Craig would say is, you know, good brain, able to find solutions, um, willing to be in a minority of one, which is, you know, not always fun, but but can be important. And um, that when we and I think this is true of everyone at Metro Bank, actually, in, in the executive committee is that when we sat around the table, it's hard. It was hard to tell what somebody's job was, what their sort of specialism was. Mm -hmm because there was a very strong sense of a leadership team. But mm. that when push came to shove, and this was definitely an ethos we had as a team, if there was really, you know, kind of strong challenge and disagreement, ultimately, if it was a people thing, I was the expert, you know, it was it was within reason, my kind of steer shout on it. Mm -hmm. um, I think the other thing about um, being on, you know, the executive team, at, at, Metro Bank was that 
everybody there was so passionate about what we were building that um, the need to be really databased and grounded in the data was so important in that business because when you have lots of passionate people all caring about what's going on having having that sort of hang on a sec what does the data tell us you know what do we really need to do um and it's definitely something that i have you know kind of carried with me and certainly um at aviva i think you know we've got a brilliant um people data analytics team now and um they you know that kind of data keeping you honest is uh is really important for business leaders whatever you're doing interesting and if you but if you now, now reflected back on your on your sort of whole career is there anything you would have done dif differently see if i say no it makes me sound like I, there are a lot of things <laughs> I'd, i should have probably done differently but i'm a great believer in um learn from it because mm -hmm. either way whether it's brilliant or not so brilliant um mm -hmm. there's learning to be taken from it um and don't beat yourself up a bit about it you know life's a wee bit too short for for regrets about you know should have would have as long as you've learned from it i think um that's that's the most important thing could i have left lloyd sooner yeah could i have gone somewhere else instead of barclays yeah in fact i was when i joined barclays i was talking to metrobank about going there and went oh it's a bit scary it's a bit too early i'm not really sure that's the right thing for me to do but I think going to Barclays was brilliant for me. It gave me a different experience and a grounding in the sort of corporate functions aspect of HR, which I wouldn't have got anywhere else and is very useful in my current role. Um, you know, the other thing that um, Barclays is great for a grounding in from an HR perspective is, um, especially when you're doing corporate functions, is reward. And reward is a really important aspect of, you know, if you're doing a sort of group CHRO role, you really do need to understand especially in financial services, remuneration and how it works. Um, so I, I I kind of try not to have regrets, just try and learn on the way. <laughs> and, 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 and has um, the pandemic impacted your leadership style at all? Um, yes, I think both the pandemic and also coming back to an organisation the scale of Aviva. So, um, you know, Lloyd's when I left, must have been 125,000 people, right? It was huge. Um, Barclays was huge, but the corporate functions were a fairly kind of, you know, confined, defined set of people. When I joined Metrobank, it was tiny, 300 people and 4,000 when I left. So coming into an organisation the size of Aviva, when I joined, I think we had 28,000 people. And, you know, it's much easier to get to know a business and its people by just, getting out on the you know getting on the road and meeting people and understanding what what your customers experience and what the learning's like and what it's like to be hired into a contact center in Aviva and all that sort of stuff so when I joined Aviva in um February 2020 a month before lockdown <laughs> um yes I said to um you know the, the team who support me there I went right we're visiting every UK site within the next three months and I want to visit every site globally within the next six months I almost blame myself for the lockdown, right? Um, and uh, the first, I think my first week at Aviva, we went, we have a site in Eastleigh, drove down to Eastleigh, spent some time call listening, um, was like, oh, this is interesting. And, you know, understanding how people had joined, why they were still here, you know, things that people bring up, the air conditioning here isn't great. Okay, fine. Um, uh, and then we stopped inter-site travel at that point because COVID was becoming an issue. And then, you know, within within three weeks of that, um, the UK was in lockdown and um, I had to work out a really different way of engaging with people because my usual approach of get out, meet people, get them together, you know, understand, ask, mm -hmm. you know, let me ask you some questions, let me meet you, connect with you, um, was just not possible. Um, and I think in in this kind of format especially when we were first using it. it I mean it takes an awful lot of energy and you almost have to kind of dial it up and how do you get people to engage with you on a screen when they don't know you it's much harder to build rapport um 
So I think I put in a lot more different types of touch points, you know, rather yeah. than just right informal stuff, you know, live streams and um, virtual visits to sites and uh, with great help from, you know, the internal comms team who were, who were really good at all this sort of stuff. Um, but I think just, just realising that um, your personal warmth and relationship building is is brilliant but that's not you know that's not the only way to do it and you need to be able to flex your style was probably a lesson for many leaders and actually mm -hmm. you know there are you know some horrible consequences from um you know the pandemic and from covid but actually the introverts of the world are probably much happier sometimes you know in this in mm -hmm. this forum you put them on a team session and if we were in a, an auditorium, if you've got a question, stick your hand up, we'll bring you a mic. They're going, oh, I would rather. No, that is not happening. In a team session, you can either raise your hand and ask a question or you can put it in the chat. Suddenly we're getting different people engaged and, mm. you know, in the conversation, asking questions, which which I think is um, is brilliant. That's very good to hear. Um, and my final question for you <laughs> is if you sort of met a, met a 20 year old this evening, uh, and 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 they ask for your advice on how, on how do I become a foot a, a foot to one hundred chief people officer? Yeah. What advice would you give them? Go and understand how businesses work. Mm -hmm. Understand you know what it is that businesses do. Um, do some other jobs. Do some operational leadership jobs. Be a customer of um of HR. Um, and then be sure that you're fascinated by the breadth of the landscape. You know, when people say to me, I want to be in HR because I like people, I go, oh, no, 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 no. If you like people, go into sales, go into relationship management. You will be just really happy. I think the people who are successful mm -hmm. in HR are curious about data, about the impact people can have. Um, of course, you know, they're passionate about the culture of the organisation they mm -hmm. work in. But they're also prepared to do the difficult things. Um, and I think sometimes people where their first their first kind of approach into uh, what we do as a role is I want to do it because I love people. It's it's not a big part of the job, but being able being able to make difficult decisions and holding the line on things that aren't necessarily popular or can be very emotive. Mm. Um, is an absolutely key part of the role. Otherwise, you're just going to be exhausted and you're not going to be able to partner the CEO in the way they need. Hmm. That's a brilliant end. Thank you very much, Danny, indeed, for your time uh, and a fascinating um, talk, interview. Uh, and, 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 we and we wish you the best of luck in the future. Thank you very Thank much you indeed. Very much. Thank you.